I'm waiting here today in the State of Charge garage for a Rivian service technician to arrive at my house to perform the required maintenance to satisfy the current recall. Now this recall is affecting all 12,212 Rivian R1T and R1S vehicles that are currently in customers' hands, including mine that I just got about three weeks ago. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what exactly this recall is all about and how Rivian is dealing with it. But first, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. This video is powered by QMerit, North America's leading provider of installation services for electric vehicle charging, home energy storage, and other electrification technologies. See how Cumera is making the energy transition easy for home and business owners by following the link in the description of this video. Now I expect this to be a very short service visit because I have seen some videos of other people getting the service done. It takes like two minutes. So well, what could be so easy that it only takes two minutes? Evidently, Rivian's learned that the bolt that attaches the upper control arm for both front wheels isn't being tightened quite enough at the factory. It's causing it to loosen up over time. And in some rare instances, it actually separated from the vehicle. I did a quick internet search and found two instances where people have posted pictures of the wheel looks like it's hanging off an R1T. Nobody's been hurt. And as far as I understand, there hasn't been any accidents, but this is a serious problem if this happens to you while you're driving and the wheel separates from the vehicle. Not a good look and definitely a major safety concern. But as I said, I don't think that there's been any accidents yet and I don't think anybody's been hurt. So that's a good thing that Rivian is proactively taking care of this as quickly as they can. Okay, so today is October 12th. Five days ago, I received an email notification from Rivian that said this. Rivian Automotive LLC has decided that a defect which relates to motor vehicle safety exists in certain model year 2022 Rivian R1T, R1S, and EDV vehicles. EDV is the electric delivery van vehicles that Amazon is buying from Rivian. The subject population is comprised of model year 2022 R1T and R1S vehicles built during a 13-month period and a subset of EDVs produced between December 10th, 2021 and September 27th, 2022, in which records cannot confirm that the front upper control arm and the steering knuckle retention fastener for each front wheel was sufficiently torqued. This notice applies to your vehicle, VIN, and I have it blacked out a little bit there. Uh, what's the problem? An insufficiently torqued steering knuckle fastener could cause excessive wheel camber or in rare instances, a separation, as we've seen in the pictures that I posted, uh, affecting the driver's ability to control the vehicle and increasing the risk of a crash. What will Rivian do? Rivian will offer mobile service appointments, no appointment needed visits to Rivian service centers or pop-up service locations, and prioritizing appointments at Rivian service centers to inspect and, if necessary, sufficiently secure the steering knuckle fasteners for the affected vehicles. For the very small percentage where part replacements are required, loaner vehicles will be made available while the vehicle is brought into a Rivian service center as needed. Trip interruption and towing services will be available at no cost to you. Then it says, what should you do? It has the phone number there that I called to make my appointment. And then eight minutes later, I received another email, but this time it was signed by Rivian's founder and CEO, RJ Scaringe, and it said this. Moments ago, we notified you of a voluntary recall on our vehicles. The official recall notice will be posted on the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration tomorrow morning. However, we wanted to get this news to you as fast as possible. On a small percentage of vehicles, the fastener connecting the front upper control arm and steering knuckle may not have been sufficiently torqued. While we've only seen seven reports potentially related to this issue across our fleet to date, even one is too many. Out of an abundance of caution, we made the decision to issue a voluntary recall and have built out the capacity to address every impacted vehicle in the next 30 days. 
For the vast majority of you, the process will take a few minutes simply requiring the fastener in question to be tightened to a higher torque tolerance. By calling Rivian, that's the number, you can schedule a mobile service appointment and we will come to you to help minimize the disruption this may cause. Our service team is available by phone 24 hours a day. You can also bring your vehicle to a Rivian service center, no appointment necessary. We will be setting up pop-up locations in high density areas for additional coverage as well. More information on the recall, including instructions, service locations, and hours can be found on our support center. For the small percentage where parts replacement are required, loaner vehicles will be made available while the vehicle is brought into a Rivian service center as needed, Trip interruption and towing services will be available at no cost to you. It's important not to minimize the potential risks involved. Yeah, we saw the pictures, RJ, and why we are volunteering to conduct this recall. In rare circumstances, the nut could loosen fully. I want to reiterate that this is extremely rare, but it does reinforce why we are acting in such urgency and caution. If you experience excessive noise, vibration, or harshness from the front suspension or a change in steering performance or feel, you should call immediately. If for any reason you don't feel safe driving your vehicle, call us and we will come to you with mobile service to pick up your vehicle and bring it in. Nothing is more important than the safety of our drivers, and we will always operate with this level of action. Thank you for your support, RJ. So as instructed, I called the number in the email, and I was given the option of bringing my Rivian into the nearest service center or having it done at my house. Now, the nearest Rivian service center is about 70 miles from my house, that's not too bad, but it's in Brooklyn, New York. That's bad. <laughs> it's really difficult getting in and out of Brooklyn. That 70 mile drive might take me three hours if traffic is bad. If there's no traffic, I might be able to do it in an hour and a half, but in any event, that's pretty inconvenient and I don't think I should have to go through that. So I said, no, you're gonna come do it at my house, which they were fine with. And they actually gave me a appointment date five days later, which is today, which is pretty quick turnaround. Now, they scheduled me for between 12 noon and 4 p.m., but the funny thing is when I looked at my app, it said that it was the service was scheduled for today, but between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. Now, nobody rang my bell last night in the middle of the night, and lucky for them, they didn't, but uh, I assume that whoever just put this in the computer system made a mistake and put a.m. instead of p.m. It's almost noon now, so I'm expecting somebody to roll up pretty soon. I'm gonna wait here until they do. Then we're going to record the service and see exactly what it's like. I'm sure it's gonna be a short recording, as I said, because I think they just have to tighten two bolts. But in any event, we'll record it and then we'll talk about it. At about 1 p.m., I noticed an R1T pulling up my driveway, and I went outside to greet the service technician. His name was Nuriel, and he hopped out of the R1T with a torque wrench in his hand. Now, I asked him if he could give us a tour of the Rivian mobile service truck, but unfortunately, he came in just a regular R1T. He explained that the specially modded service trucks are really needed for more complex repairs. And since the recall was simply tightening a bolt, they just sent out regular R1Ts for this because they didn't need parts or any kind of other special tools. But I really wanted to show you all what the R1T mobile service truck looks like. So fortunately, I recorded a short clip of one a few months ago while I was at the Rivian R1S Media First Drive. Let's take a look at that video clip first. I've had people ask me questions about Rivian service. Now we know Rivian isn't gonna have showrooms. Uh, they're gonna have service centers to service their vehicles, but it's gonna take them a while to build out a service network. What happens when you get an R1T or an R1S and you need service and the nearest service center is a long distance away, or let's say it's a minor problem and you don't wanna to have to take it to the service center. Rivian is going to build out a fleet of these guys you see behind me. It's an R1T that is set for mobile service. Like Tesla, Tesla has the, uh, the Tesla Rangers that go out in modified Tesla Model Xs and fix your vehicles on site. I actually had one of those visit my house about two weeks ago to fix a problem and they fixed it. It was great, came, did the work in my driveway while I was upstairs editing videos. 
awesome service. I like it better than going to a dealership. But Rivian now is going to be following that same plan. And this is the vehicle here that is going to be sent out to repair the vehicle. So let's take a quick look at it over here. Now, you'll notice the gear tunnel I'm going to open up here now has some really cool features in it. Give me one second. Let's press this button. Take a look at the gear tunnel here. Now, down here, we got this monster hydraulic jack. Look at that guy. <laughs> really cool to be able to lift heavy vehicles. The R1T and the R1S are heavy. They've got huge batteries. We got this other tray here. I'm going to open it up. And this has a bunch of tools. Now, the other side of the gear tunnel has uh, similar slide out trays that hold all different types of tools and parts. Now you also have the back seat area here that has on both sides, you can see all these different parts bins. And you see this uh, cover that they have over here? It locks into, let me hold this, it locks into the seat belt. And what it does is it protects the driver, if he has to stop really quickly or if there's an accident, all those parts won't go flying into the front of the vehicle. So this is pretty much the first time we've seen this uh, type of a vehicle. And uh, I'm here at the Rivian R1S first drive event. Can't talk about my driving experiences just yet. That's coming out in a couple of weeks. But this is the first time we're getting a chance to take a look at the mobile service truck that Rivian's going to be using to do on-site service. All right, back to the recall service and the real reason we're here today. So Nareel asked me to raise the truck up to the highest suspension setting that there is and then turn the steering wheel all the way to the right for him to have better access. He then reached under and used the digital torque wrench to measure how tight the bolt currently was and he recorded it. Now Rivian is recording this on all the vehicles so they could see just how many had their bolts loosened up. After he did that, it was time to tighten things up. After a couple of pulls on the digital wrench, it began beeping to tell him he reached the 120 Newton meter threshold that Rivian wants the bolts tightened to. Now the original factory setting was 70 Newton meter. Both of my bolts measured about 64 Newton meter. So they already had begun to loosen. Norell then repeated the service on the other side of the vehicle and he was done. The only thing left for him to do was to take a picture of the vehicle info screen that showed him my VIN and the current mileage. Norell then politely said goodbye, hopped into his R1T and checked his schedule. He was then off to perform this on-site mobile service for another R1T owner. Okay, well that was easy. My only disappointment was that they didn't bring the full Rivian service vehicle. But hey, I understand uh, this is such a simple uh, service visit. They didn't need to bring extra tools or parts or anything like that. So I guess it makes sense to save those vehicles for when they really have to do a major repair. And quite honestly, I don't know how many of those vehicles the Brooklyn Service Center has yet. Rivian just started uh, putting these vehicles out in service. They might only have one. They might not even have any at this point just yet, but in the future, that's what they're gonna do for mobile service. They're gonna have those R1Ts and probably even R1Ss at some point outfitted to be full service vehicles and do on-site repairs. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. Um, you know, kudos on Rivian. I think they dealt with this pretty well. I think they're promising to have all of the trucks done like within a month, which is, I know there's only 12,000 vehicles. It's not a crazy amount of vehicles, but you have to realize they don't have a lot of service centers around the country. So there's going to be a lot of in-person mobile service, a lot of the technicians are going to have to drive, you know, many, maybe hundreds of miles in some cases to reach people that are in more remote areas. But hey, Rivian said they're going to be able to do this in a really short period of time. It is a safety issue. They don't want to tell the people to stop using the vehicle. So hopefully they'll get this done pretty quickly. And quite honestly, based on my first experience with Rivian service, if this is how they execute, then I'm going to be happy with my R1T moving forward. Now, if this is the first time you've been here on State of Charge, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And as always, thanks for watching.